Hi guys. So um, before we start lesson 5.3, I would like to just go over a few um, topics from the past that might help you uh, to remember some things that we're going to need for the final exam. So it says the graph of Y has what vertical and horizontal asymptotes? So let, let's go remember those rules. So remember, vertical asymptotes are uh, for a rational function where the denominator equals 0. So we're looking at where x squared minus 1 equals 0. Now that's a factorable quantity, or you can just solve it traditionally, however you want to do it. And so we get plus or minus 1. There are vertical asymptotes. Now I thought the horizontal asymptotes for this one were a little bit kind of neat, uh, different, whatever you want to look. If you look at the rational function part, since they both are x squared, we would use the coefficients 1 over 1. But we've got that 2 out there, and I think that's where we could get a little bit hung up. That uh, traditional function has been lifted up to, and so now the horizontal asymptote isn't at 1 anymore. The horizontal asymptote is at 3. So just kind of a neat problem. I wanted you to see that. Um, and now let's go ahead and look at lesson 5.3. Maybe we're going to look at less than <laughs> Just a second. <laughs> Let's go backwards and try again. So 5.3 is a uh, new way to look at volumes. Um, in section 5.2, uh, we did volumes by disc or washer. Uh, when you do disks and washers, um, it works pretty well for many, many equations that, you know, pi r squared sort of thinking. The trouble with that is not every equation can be rewritten in the correct form. Remember, if you rotate it around the x-axis, you want a function of x. If you rotate it about the y-axis, you want a function of y. Not all functions will allow you to do that. And so what the shell method allows us to do is to calculate volumes of things where we can't necessarily rearrange it the way we want to. And, um, you know, if, you, if the other method works, you can still use that other method, and I'll show you an example of that. But this just helps us for times when you get kind of stuck in the other method. So let me kind of show you where this comes from. Here we have a solid obtained by rotating about the y-axis sum f of x, okay? And f is a continuous function that's greater than zero. Um, and we want to rotate the section of the graph from a to b. And so, so if we see this little graph here, you know, we've, we've got this f of x, and we're just looking at the section from a to b. And we rotate it about the y-axis. Sorry about that. If we rotate it about the y-axis, we're going to get what you see here. Okay? And what's interesting is that we can um, find the volume of that solid by using the formula 2 pi x f of x. So it's really kind of a neat sort of idea. We're rotating about something that is uh, vertical, yet we didn't have to rearrange it in terms of y, which we normally would have to do if we're using the formulas from 5, 2. Okay. So if you wrote this time, if we are rotating about the y axis or a vertical line, we can use a function of x. If we wanted to rotate it about the x-axis, we would have to, for this, it would be 2 pi y, f of y, if we rotate it about the x-axis. So just kind of something different. So let's look at some examples. I just have three examples for you. So 
let's say we want to take the equation 2x, y equals 2x squared minus x cubed. And we're looking at uh, rotating about the y-axis. And we're looking at the region uh, where that um, cubic function is and the x-axis. Okay, so what you always want to do is draw a picture. So here's a picture. So we've got 2x squared minus x cubed. Okay, um, and we're looking at the, the section between the x-axis, so that's that little section right there. And then we're going to rotate that about the y-axis. So you get something like that. Think about, you know, you would, I like to kind of even draw, you know, it over here and see how it, it has that little dip about it, okay? Okay. <laughs> I'm such a good artist, I know. Okay. So, what's the radius and what's the height? Well, 2 pi x is our radius. f of x, 2x squared minus x cubed is our height. And so, um, you know, you want to clean that up, make it ready to uh, take the general antiderivative. So, leave that 2 pi as your constant out in front. Distribute in your x. And now we're ready to go. So the volume is just going to be the integration from 0 to 2 of 2 pi x f of x, which ends up being 2 pi times the quantity of 2x cubed minus x to the fourth. Now how do you take the antiderivative of that? Pretty straightforward, right? So first, I just did the general antiderivatives of 2x to the third becomes 2x to the fourth over 4 and then x to the fourth becomes x to the fifth over five. Okay, just leave that two pi constant out in front. We have um, boundaries of zero and two. And um, you're just gonna plug those in. I did clean this up, two and four becomes one half, but you know. And you get a final answer of 16 pi over 5. So a lot of these do end up becoming fractional um, for, uh, you know, common denominator 5 and go from there, okay? So there is a, an example of using this uh, shell instead of disk and washer sort of idea, okay? Well, let's look at another one. Now, here is a perfect example where we want to rotate uh, this function about the y-axis. If we try to do it the alternate way, the way that we learned in 5.2, think about what x minus 1 times x minus 3 squared looks like. It's a long polynomial cubic, okay? If we multiply that out, and then we tried to actually physically solve for x. It's pretty much impossible to do it and make it a function of y. And so we can't use that other method. We have to use the method we just learned. So what's nice is if we draw a picture, that's what it looks like. Okay. So we are looking at just the region above the x, uh, bounded by the x-axis. We're going to rotate that about the y-axis, and we get like this kind of little um, neat, strange, curved cylinder. It kind of reminds me like a jello mold or something. <laughs> and, and if you even know what that is, look it up. I don't know. Anyway, so, um, uh, so, so what's our radius and what's our height? Well, remember, normally it's going to usually end up being 2 pi x f of x if we're rotating about the... Uh, I'll, the y-axis or a vertical line, and so we get 2 pi x f of x. Here's our f of x sitting, sitting right there. Now you want to get that ready to integrate. So when we integrate it from 1 to 3, because that's where it hits the x-axis. See, uh, if you remember back from pre-calc, it would hit at 1 and it would hit at 3 and bounce off at 3, just like we see here in the picture. So drawing that picture is going to be helpful. 
And so the best way I think to deal with this is to physically multiply that whole thing out. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, I would probably square this. I would probably distribute these two together and then distribute the whole thing together. Okay, so you get an x to the fourth when it's all done. Here is the polynomial you'll get when it's all done. Now you want to do that so that you can um, actually then take the general antiderivative. So just leave your 2 pi out in front. Your 2 pi is your constant. Leave that there. Take the general antiderivative of each piece. That's what you get when you first do the general antiderivative. I didn't reduce any of that. The 15 over 3 could reduce a little bit. Um, so then you stick in 3 minus when you stick in 1. And then you get 24 pi over 5 for your final answer. So these ones aren't too bad to set up. Remember, if you're rotating about the y-axis, you don't have to solve it for y anymore, or uh, in terms of y anymore, because of the fact that we have this alternative shell formula. But I did want to show you one where it works either way. Okay, So our last example, we can do it either method, and it's going to work and give us the same answer. So in this example, it says find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating about the x-axis, the region bounded by y equals, and that's the cube root of x, uh, and x equals 8 about the x-axis, or and the x-axis. Okay. So first thing we want to do is look at a picture. So here's a picture. That is what it looks at like from 0 to 8, the cube root, and uh, the x-axis. The other p there is a piece on the other side, um, but we're only looking from 0 to 8. Okay. So we can do the 2 pi x f of x thing, but now we're going to solve it for y. Now let's think about this for a little bit. So if we have y equals the cubed root of 8, or x, oh goodness gracious, and if we cube both sides, we get y cubed equals x. Okay, So now we are rotating about the x-axis. We want it to be in terms of y. Normally, if we did the other method, we would keep it in terms of x's. But now we want to use y, f of y. Well, here's y. f of y. Now why is it the 8? Okay, so let me kind of draw your little picture here. This, this little section is gone. So we have to account for the fact that our width is always going to be 8 minus off this little piece right here, which is the y cubed. Look at this piece. 8 minus off y cubed. 8 minus off y cubed, 8 minus off y cubed, so that's our width. So then we got to get it ready to integrate. So I would distribute this y into both things. You get 2 pi uh, times the quantity of 8y minus y to the fourth. We're going to do that from this time, the y heights. The cubed root of 8 is 2, so our heights go from 0 to 2. So that is the setup of our uh, integral. Here's what the picture looks like if we rotate it. Kind of, like, uh, kind of looks like a thimble or something. And then we're going to um, take the general antiderivative, leave your 2 pi out in front. Well, this time I distributed the 2 pi. You, you can do it either way. Okay. And we get um, 8 pi y squared minus 2 fifths pi.
pi y to the fifth, we stick in 2, we stick in 0, we get 96 pi over 5. Now, this particular example, we can do it in shells just like we did, but it can also be done the way that we learned before. Uh, pi times the outer radius minus the inner radius, or pi times the uh, radius squared, okay? So, um, if you look up the setup, is a little simpler if we do it the, uh, the disk and washer method from 5.2. Um, it would just be pi times the um, cube root of x squared, which is, becomes to the 2 thirds. And then if we uh, take that power is going to go up to 5 thirds, you put the 3 fifths in front, we stick in the 8, you still get 96 pi over 5. So it, either method works. There are some equations where the one method works better than the other method. It really just kind of depends on the situation that you're in, okay? So uh, there's some examples of those. And your assignment this time, uh, you see here. So good luck to you. And you know where to find me if you have any questions. Okay.